President Emerson Mnangagwa's administration through the National Prosecuting Authority has officially approached the South African government to facilitate the extradition of former cabinet minister Sevia Kasukuere to Zimbabwe to answer to four counts of criminal abuse of, of duty as a public officer. According to the state media, the first three counts that Kasukuere faces arise from the time he was local government minister and he corruptly parceled out of 220 hectares of land in Harare and Maswingo to the sister of former First Lady Grace Mugabe. At the time of attempted coup in Zimbabwe in 2017, he was ZANU-PF's national commissar. He joins us now, of course, to discuss the story and more. Good evening, Mr. Kasukwere. Thank you so much for your time tonight. Let's just begin with your reaction to the latest developments. Well, um, it's, it's uh, politics. There is no crime. Uh, in fact, I submitted myself twice to the authorities in Harare, said uh, through the court processes, I was acquitted twice on the same charges, notwithstanding the fact that the basis for the removal of President Mugabe was an accusation that uh, there were criminals around him, and principally some of us. And we challenged that, they are to say, what exactly is that we've done? They have not been able to produce anything tangible Serve for some of these spurious charges that they've uh, brought forward, and we were courageous enough to face them in court, and we were acquitted on all the four issues that they've raised there. Again, on top of that, as you recall, if we had committed, and I say the we because this is an accusation that was also made to some of my colleagues, we should have been arrested, not shot at. What happened on the eve of the coup, on the 15th uh, of November 2017, very early in the morning, about 2 a.m., gunmen, uh, Defence Forces members, surrounded my property and other comrades' properties and shot at us with the intention of killing. Now, do you submit yourself to people who would have intended to kill you in the first place? The reason why we moved out of Zimbabwe uh, was basically just to be in a much more secure environment. In fact, if anything, we would want to know who did that? Who was responsible for those that attempted assassination of many colleagues, including our families? So this, for us, is basically consolidation of power. And Nagago wants to consolidate this power. He wants to use such institutions to fight his perceived enemies. We have, on many occasions, thought that we as Zimbabweans, we mean no harm to our country. We want our country to prosper. In spite of the shenanigans that we used for him to acquire the power, we thought it was time to build bridges to move forward. But unknown to us, he is not done with those he or who opposed him from day one. Within the party, it is always the norm. Some people who will not be comfortable with other people becoming leadership because of certain things that would have observed. And it is not only us and not only me who felt uncomfortable, and I think the whole nation can now attest to the issues of why we felt Nangagwa was not a capable leader. You can't run a country like uh, somebody don't attach me. You've got to run a country as a statesman. You've got to run a country in the best interest of all. You've got to unite the country. You've got to put people together and move your nation forward. So what we are seeing... Are you saying that uh, you are innocent of the charges they, uh, they have brought uh, you know, forward to you? Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, I was in court. I was acquitted last year. I was acquitted on the same charges. I went to court on the 23rd of September 2018. I flew officially myself from South Africa to Zimbabwe, to Harare, and went to court, arrested on the 24th. Went to court, and the High Court acquitted me. On the same spurious charges. And, 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 I mean, when you, when you really um, think about it here and, and then you're talking or you're describing situations where you're saying there was a shooting, there was, you know, you, were, you subjected yourself to this, you ended up leaving um, the country. I know you say that there's a consolidation of power that you're talking about where the president is concerned, but why would you specifically be targeted if you've done nothing wrong? Well, the, uh, and remember the nature of uh, the political setup in Zimbabwe. There are people who felt that we had to 
promote democracy within the party, where the different political view of the situation and ideological differences, we support the President Mugabe. President Mugabe was due to step down within about two weeks to into the Congress before the coup happened. And a lot of the comrades, in fact, I must say, the majority of the comrades in the party felt that we needed a constitutional process that was going to change the leadership within the party. And this is where the challenge comes in. The coup was effected. Nangako comes back without the mandate of the party membership. He is not an elected leader of Zanupia. And the thing that he can only do is how does he eliminate those he perceives to have been opposed to his bid to become president. And let's talk and then... The, let's, the members who are called G40. Let's talk then about, obviously, Zimbabwe. And, and we have been seeing a lot of concerning stories, uh, you know, emerging from Zimbabwe, even uh, food prices that are skyrocketing and people not even been able to afford, uh, you know, basic necessities. Certainly, some of those that we have spoken to through our reporter who's based in Zimbabwe are not only blaming this particular administration. They're also saying the administration that was at the time of Robert Mugabe as well is partly responsible for what has become of Zimbabwe because that's when the deterioration start. What do you say to that? Because you're somebody that was also in that administration. You know, admittedly, there were failures and successes of that administration led by President Mugabe. Notwithstanding that, Nangabwe has been on the side of President Mugabe for over 54 years, including that from day one he was in cabinet. And many of the comrades who are talking today and who are in charge of Zimbabwe were actually principal actors in the challenges that the country faced, in some of the things that happened in our country to this day. In fact, for them even to call themselves the Seventh Second Republic is basically just lying to themselves. The problems that Zimbabwe faces today are problems of us together, those who are in leadership, and what should be done is to confront those challenges head on. A number of our people are living in difficulties, in destitution. Some of our young men and women are working throughout the world, including here in South Africa. They are working in almost all the places that you can talk about. But this needs us to confront this challenge economically and resolve some of these issues. At the center of it is questions of democracy, peace, and stability. For us to attract investment into the country, we need to be a, nation, a country that respects the heroes. We need to be able to be have peace and stability. There must be democracy, as it is. And for me to be speaking right now against my own country or against the leadership in the country works against the collective interests of our people because we would rather be able to give out a positive message. But the leadership for these years you have talked about has been one of how do I eliminate competition. President Mugabe did his best. President Gabe was human, he might have made his mistakes, but there is no reason for us to continue to make our people suffer, and this is the situation now, which is actually becoming even worse. And I, I understand, according to some media reports, you've had meetings with the ANC, you and the late uh, form, uh, former President Robert Mugabe's nephew, Patrick Joao, who also joined me here on News from Africa just last month. If you've had these meetings with the ANC, what were they all about? Well, we, I would say first and foremost, those were privileged meetings. We have raised serious concerns that we had with the African National Congress. And at some point, certainly, I think it will be a, it will be a pleasure to disclose the discussions. We have raised issues in confidence with the African National Congress. And I would request that perhaps at this point in time, we respect um, that process and that uh, uh, discussion that we've had with the African National Congress. Would you say things in Zimbabwe are at crisis level? Well, certainly, as for me, for you to have over eight former ministers living in South Africa, uh, some outside uh, Mozambique, Kenya, and other countries, uh, perhaps half of your uh, senior members of the party have left the country just because President Mugabe has gone and they are being persecuted, that is not a sign of a stable country. Secondly, to have a situation where those who served, be in the security services, who served with President Mugabe are being fired left, right and center, because we are allegedly having been close to President Mugabe. Again, it's not 
a sign of peace and stability. And come and look at the economy. The economy has been very, very difficult for the ordinary men and women in our country. These are issues that are manifesting the thousands and millions of our people leaving the country directly, living outside our borders. That again shows that we have a crisis. We need a country that is stable, and the country that is stable is self-evident by the way the leadership and their people work together in harmony with other countries neighboring us, where you can point out that there is, there is a peace, there is stability, and people are working together. And Zimbabwe certainly is a country in crisis. Look at the health delivery institutions, which have been affected in a very big way. The challenges in the education, teachers on strike. To say we are a step at this point in time, I think it's, it's deluding ourselves. We have a crisis. We have the challenge of leadership. We have the legitimacy issues, legitimate issues that arise from the way the coup was carried out. You can't always use the gun as a basis of running the country. All right. Uh, that's where we'll leave it for tonight. Uh, that was Xavier Kasukuere, who is Zimbabwe's former Minister of Local Government, Rural Development and National Housing. Thank you very much for your time tonight.